We back. It's the Boxing Clinic. Good morning, your boy CJ Goodfellow. I don't really get into the too much of a lengthy video, but um, you know, this occasion <laughs> that Keith Thurman is officially really injured in this uh, May nineteenth Brooklyn Barclay return has been pushed back is um, the exception, you know. And at the end of the day, I told you guys, you know, him and Danny Garcia was sounding real retirement ish, you know, and how they moving and how they talking. You know, I remember both of those guys were young lions coming up and wanted just any opportunity. And now that they didn't, you know, tasted some success, you know, that's the real true telling of a character, especially in sports and in life. When you taste success, you reach your goals. Will your, will your hunger maintain? Will it still go up? Do you still want it all? New socks, new drawers? Do you still want to grind and, and work every day in the gym like you a poor man? And that's the drive that Mayweather had. That's the drive that Muhammad Ali had. That's the drive that all the greats have. You know, you know, maybe Michael Jordan, may it be LeBron, may it be, you know, whoever. You know, Derek Jeter, you know, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods in his prime, and even Tiger Woods now. The reason people say, why he just don't quit or go on a senior tour? He's hungry. He's not satisfied. He still wants to be the best. And to keep Thurman, I didn't sense that. Even when the interviews he did with Earl Spence on Showtime, where Earl is just looking like a hungry lion, looking at a raw hyena right there ready to eat him, some raw hyena meat. And Keith was just saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not as hungry as him, but I still have belly in my, I have stomach in my, uh, room for my stomach for, for more. And just how he's moving. We remember Thurman was calling Paulie out saying, don't duck me in the, in the arena. Um, you know, outside the in the outside the arena, the restaurants and stuff in the little lobby, calling out Amir Khan, saying that he wants this, saying that he wants Mayweather, he wants Pacquiao. He was on fire. You know, people thought Keith Thurman really was was a cold blooded killer. And uh, soon as he got those titles, soon as he elevated from regular champion to super WBA champion to the WBC championship belt, it seems that he's reached his success and he's reached his goals. He's maxed out on what he wants to do. And I seen another interview with, with uh, the Boxing Camp Life with Nestor Gibbs and the Boxing Voice. Shout out to them. I'm a big supporter of that show. Where he said if, you know, when I came into the amateurs and the pro, he said if I can at least be number two, I can have a good career. Like, who the fuck says that? Who's aiming? Who's actually, um, you know, okay with being number two? You know, when he was just stuff that he was saying you know, of recent, you know, of that time that was recent, not too long ago, just to me, it was like, you know what, man, this this guy looks like he's out the door, and fans be like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, and this and that, you know, you just got to read between the lines, sometimes it's not that blatant for people, and everybody had a different gifts, I could just read the bullshit, and I told you guys at this point that he never wanted Earl Spence, he didn't want that ass whooping, and as far as with Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, they don't want that ass whooping. They don't want that burden of, of fucking with him. You know, Sean was saying, you know, I can't see myself retiring without facing Earl Spence. But I don't know how much longer I'm going to make the wait. Like last year, like what? Because you already planning your escape plan. Danny Garcia saying, if I can't get the right fight, I'm going to 54. Like, bro, you, you, barely, you barely relevant at 147 for real. You know what I'm saying? As far as competing with some of these guys. And, you know, you hear the things. And I knew it was going to be something with Keith Thurman, man. Like, it ain't the elbow, now it's the hand. It's been an abundance of, in a, in a long laundry list of hand injuries from Terrence Crawford. And we know he really didn't injure his hand, you know, because I told you guys how he was talking to Vilify Media. Shout out to the homie of Vilify Media. How he told him, don't ask me nothing about my fight with Jeff Horn. This is before he injured the hand. He was acting real touchy about that fight. They didn't put that fight out there because they had no backup plan. It was supposed to be a pay-per-view event. ESPN didn't want to dish out the cash. And Manny Pacquiao was going to be the selling point for that event. So it didn't happen. So that hand injury was irrelevant. And it seems like Billy Joe Saunders' hand injury was real. He, You know, they talking about him stepping in for Golovkin. He's, you know, Frank Warren and him say, well, at least his promoter says he don't know if the hand's going to be healed by then. That's why I got pushed back with Martin Murray, June 20, whatever the fuck it was. And now you're good with Keith Thurman. He probably did injure his hand. Keith Thurman's body could be breaking down, you know, from all that inactivity. That's why it's important to be inact, would be active and not be inactive. That's what Roger was telling Floyd. 
He was telling Floyd when he was fighting once in the blue moon, you can't do that. You got to stay active because if you don't, a body in motion stays in motion. A body that's, you know, you know, it stays still, you know, starts to break down and cripple and your body starts to rip. It's not used to, you know, going through the, the treacherous or the rigorous training camps. And, you know, believe it or not, training for a sport is actually harder than the sport. Training for boxing is harder than an actual boxing match. Because every day when you work out and you physically get fit, you're not building muscle when you work out. You're tearing the muscle down and all the nutrients and the rest and, and all that stuff you do after you work out is what's built the muscle up. It, it repairs the muscle and it builds it back up. And that's how the body works, you know. So, um, you know, and they know that. And when you're inactive, you fight once in 2016 and once in 2017. Your body going to continue to break down. You're going to have elbow injuries. You know, you're going to have soft tissue mu- injuries. You know, you're going to have hand injuries. Your body's not used to putting that work in. And it didn't help Keith Thurman when he was over in the pause, sparring with some of those amateur fighters. They're trying to start an amateur program. He he boxing, and they saying his elbow injury, and it looked perfectly fine. You know, while he sparring, even though it was a small clip, it didn't help Keith Thurman that after the injury, he waited three months to have an in- had a, the surgery from what I hear. You know, it, it didn't it didn't help him at all. And people just think he's just trying to put Earl on ice and trying to put the division on ice and, and play around with it, you know. Even before the hand injury became a topic today, he still didn't have an opponent. So don't that seem a little bit fishy that he didn't have an opponent and all of a sudden he comes up with a hand injury? That seems fishy to me. You know, it really does. You know, oh, he got a hand injury and we still ain't got an opponent name. It, you know, in PBC, Premier Boxing Champions, it's good for leaking information out. You're good hearing something from somebody about an opponent. But he didn't, you know, you didn't hear nothing about an opponent. I mean, you couldn't even make up a rumor that sounded right about him, about who he was going to fight. You know, and at the end of the day, it's time to strip this guy. If he don't have a fight by June 30th or whatever, many days in June 31st, it's time to strip this guy because then he going to try to fight once this year. And then that's going to be his tune-up. Then he's going to try to do whatever he do next year. You never know what's going to come up. So as far as the WBC, strip that ass. No if and, if and bust about it. Strip that ass. I understand his relationship with the WBA. He worked two for nil to get that, that belt. He, he beat Diego Chavez for that belt, the regular belt. And then he got elevated to the super champion. So he never fought the cha- super champion, which is not designed to. The Super WBA champion is actually, you know, this doesn't have a mandatory because it's supposed to be able to give you the flexibility to unify. And it's a great idea once you look at it. And it could just use a few tweaks for it to be, you know, close to perfection. But that's another conversation for another day. You know, it's just all too convenient that, you know, he injures his hand. And there was no opponent ever rumored to slip out, you know. And I think this was the play all the time. I don't know why they protect and keep Thurman. But I know Earl Smith is sitting back like, you know, this is some bullshit. And, and it is. You know, it really is. And um, it just seems and give more credence and more traction to the to the notion that he's ducking Earl Spence. And, and the fight ain't going to happen. I told you guys, man. You know, this fight probably won't happen. You know, it was funny. Me and uh, Steven Styles was having um, a conversation in the inbox. And I swear to God, like two days ago, he said, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Keith Thurman, it was no... It, well, he was saying it was no inklings of, of 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 a fight for Keith Thurman, and I did a video. He came on the inbox saying like, you know what, it'd be one surprise me if Keith injured himself and ended up retiring. And you know, as a joke, I didn't think it was a joke. You know, that's some real shit. Now two days later, he injured. You know, I don't take that shit as a joke. Anything with Keith Thurman and light skinned it, brothers, man, you don't know, man. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he say he had a career in in. <laughs> Career ending injury, hand, hand, elbow injury, or something like that, man. You know, I just think, I just don't think he wants to compete no more. You know, somebody say he's a dead rose of boxing, probably is. Every injury is being exaggerated, or, or he's, you know, oh, you know, he's overreacting to the injury and making it bigger than what it is. And it's a mental hurdle when you injure yourself to get over, especially with the elbow. But remember, he fought Danny Garcia with that injured elbow and still went on and outboxed Danny Garcia. Now, you just wonder, what if the competition was so thick at World's Way? Would he be acting like this? And now he's holding up the division again. They have to strip him, at least at the WBC. And I would strip him of both of them. Come back when you will, son, and you can get an immediate uh, shot. You know, and see if he takes that immediate shot. Because basically, this could complicate things, like I talked about earlier in the video. 
um, we got time. I think it, it complicates things because, okay, hypothetically, Sean and Danny can fight for the WC title belt. And then you got Matisse and Pacquiao are supposed to be fighting July 8th, I believe, for the regular WBA belt. They can elevate that fight to Super WBA Championship belt, Okay. And if they do that, then you know if Pacquiao beat or Mate- or Pacquiao holds that belt, you won't see Pacquiao within t- two feet of a uh, or ten or hundred feet of Earl Spence, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia for the most fame. Maybe Danny Garcia can happen, but you know it's gonna be hard to get that belt to Premier Boxing Champions. So I mean, so because the scenario would be this: it'd be that Crawford picks up the WBO belt from Jeff Horn. It'd be Pacquiao probably picks up that belt from. Matisse, he might go down to 140. They might ask him to release the belt. I don't know. But more, nine times out of the 10, they probably a legend like Pacquiao represent him. If he can go down to 140, make the Lomachenko fight, whatever happens there, come back up, be champion at 147. He may have to release that belt if he gets beat by Lomachenko or maybe he don't want to fight no more and that, and that belt goes up for grabs. So um, maybe that belt just goes back to Keith Thurman or maybe they just let Keith Thurman hold on to the belt since they got a regular champion. I think that's the best you can hope for is to keep Thurman's to hold on the regular WBA belt, strip of the WBC, be the mini interim champion for that belt, then fight the winner, come back and fight whoever holds the WBC belt at the time, which probably still be Sean or Danny Garcia. I think Sean or Danny Garcia doesn't, you know, don't want to unify with Earl Spence. I think Earl Spence is just going to be on ice. Uh, it just wasn't the Keith Thurman thing that wasn't willing to fight him. Danny isn't willing to fight him. Sean isn't willing to fight him. Only guy that's legitimately going to be willing to fight, you know, Earl Spence is going to be Terrence Crawford. And then maybe if, you know, I don't know how it's going to play out, but um, it's basically, you know, the best you can hope for is Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence. Those are guys who's both like-minded, uh, who both stubborn, who both want, you know, don't want to go for the kill, both want to fight the best. Both camps exude a lot of a lot of confidence, and basically that's the best you're going to have to hope for, you know. Even with Keith Thurman getting him out of the WC belt or getting him out of the WBC and the Super WBA belt, it complicates shit. At least you know that Keith Thurman with the WC and the WBA belt, Errol Smith with the IBF, they was under the same Premier Boxing Champions umbrella. And, you know, you always felt that at least they may fight. But now with you throwing a coward, the cowards in like Sean Porter, the coward like Danny Garcia, Pacquiao, who's who's been a coward the latter half of his career since getting really with Bob and letting him control his career, if he gets his hand on that belt or, you know, you now you, you splitting two belts between, you know, two different fighters. And that's going to make it hard to get a unified champion at the welterweight division, an undisputed champion at that. And we talked about it. The WBO has never been part of a welterweight undisputed championship fight, a champion. You know, never been part of a, uh, they're part of a, uh, you know, they, they championship trophy belt cabinet, whatever you want to call it. So it's been, you know, with, with Curry, Donald Curry was all, I think it was the WBA, WBC, um, you know, and then it was probably the WBA, WBC, IBF, and, you know, it was difficult, you know, but do I think this is all calculated and planned by Keith Thurman? Yes. I think it's a part of him who don't want to go out there and compete, who's satisfied with what he's done, and, you know, right here at welterweight, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did end up retiring, then I wouldn't be surprised if he did move up in weight, so I've been so inactive, I can't make one for 50, 47 no more. And go to 154, you know. I, you just can't rule anything out with, with Keith Thurman, man. You can't. Um, and it's sad, though. It's sad, though, that we all could predict this and we all was in shock. We see it was only six, seven weeks out. And there still was no opponent name for this guy. And now it's not the elbow, it's the hand. The people just fed up. This is the type of shit that boxing doesn't need. This is the type of shit that, that draws fans away from boxing. You know, we got a fight that, that can really change the landscape of boxing. And Earl Spence and Keith Thurman. And it's just not going to happen now. You know, even if Danny Garcia, Sean Porter win a belt, it's going to be an excuse about Earl Spence and why they don't still want to fight him. You know, and they oh, we waiting for Keith Thurman to come back. You know, we just going to wait for Keith Thurman to come back. You know, then we want to prove that we the real champion. Then we fight Earl Spence. I mean, you know, just cause, just if they do strip Keith Thurman, it doesn't mean shit going to get better. Shit still can be complicated. It is going to be complicated. You have Danny and Sean dancing around each other, acting like pool nannies. I mean, the only guy you really can count on is Earl and Terrence Crawford to fight, and that's sad. You know, it really is. You know, because those are only real dogs in the division. Everybody else's shit zoo is Chow Wow, Chihuahua, or fucking Goldfish, you know. And um, this is just how boxing is, and they wonder why box, boxing doesn't prosper in America like that because, you know, they don't make fighters like they used to. 
You know, just like they don't make American car, big three cars that they used to, they don't make fighters like they used to. These dudes as soft as, as bread pudding on a Tuesday night, man. But y'all know what it is. It's TBC and